Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just made myself a snack and to be honest with you, I'm not actually hungry. And I thought this would be a perfect time to chat with you guys about a really common misconception when living life with no food rules is that we should only eat when we are hungry. But that's not true. Before you go calling me a crazy lady, let me explain. I'm gonna grab my snack and let's go sit down and chat. Okay guys, so for my snack, I made these little date pecan bites. It was actually a recommendation that I got from you guys on Instagram. I asked you guys in my stories what your favorite way to eat dates were and this was one of them. So it's supposed to taste like a little pecan pie mini version. So I'm excited to try those and I'll show you how I made them later in this video. It's so sunny out, I love it. Spring is coming. Like I said, I wanna to talk to you guys today about why we should not only eat when we are hungry. There are going to be times in our lives when we can't just do that. I mean, think about it. Whether you have a job and you have set lunch breaks or whatever it might be, we can't always just eat when we're hungry. It's not that easy. And today is a perfect example for me. So, like I said, I'm having this snack even though I'm not actually hungry right now. And that's because I know today lunch is going to be pushed back later. And by the time that I'm gonna be able to have lunch because I have meetings, I know I'm probably gonna be starving. And I really believe that we want to avoid those extremes. So we want to avoid getting too hungry because that's likely gonna lead us to getting too full at our next meal. And that just doesn't feel good. So that brings me really to the first time that we should be eating when we are not necessarily hungry and that is when we use this idea of practical hunger. So practical hunger is basically kind of like what I just described. So even though you may not be hungry right then, you're using practicality, you're using your brain to know that giving your body some nourishment right now is probably a good idea even though you may not be necessarily getting those hunger cues. So another instance that we might use that, like I said, is when we have meetings or something or when we're sick, this happens a lot too. And we know that our bodies need energy, but we may not necessarily have a super big appetite. So we have to use that practical hunger and give our body the nourishment that it needs. So that practical hunger is the first example of when to eat when you might not necessarily be hungry. So a second time when you might eat when you're not necessarily hungry is taste hunger. So this is legit when something just sounds good. So for instance, maybe you see cookies on the counter and you're like, man, that cookie sounds really good and I have a strong craving for it, but I'm not necessarily hungry. It's okay to eat when you are not necessarily hungry. Sometimes we still have those cravings and it's okay to honor that. I think that with this taste hunger, there's kind of a balance that we need to find with it because we don't wanna say, man, those cookies look really good. I could eat all of them. There's kind of that balance that it is individual to everyone. And I think that this taste hunger, I think it takes some trial and error to figure out what kind of your boundaries are with it and what makes you feel good. Because obviously we don't want to stuff ourselves because that's not gonna feel good. But it's okay to satisfy a craving that you might have, even if you're not necessarily actually feeling hunger cues. Or like another example that happened to me the other day, I was in Trader Joe's and you know they always have those samples. I was like, man, that sounds really good. So I got one. I wasn't necessarily hungry, but I wanted to try it. It's fine. Or Costco, let's be real, they always have those. And like I said, I think this taste hunger is really up to everyone individual. It's going to vary from time to time. Maybe sometimes you just need a bite. Maybe sometimes you need the full cookie. I think it's up to everyone to kind of find their limits with it and what makes them feel good. You should not feel guilty if you see a cookie and you literally just want the cookie. So another instance when we might eat when we're not necessarily hunger is emotional hunger. The intuitive eating book explains all of these types of hungers really well, especially this emotional eating part. And actually, I'm gonna go grab my book. Okay, so the intuitive eating book shows this really good example of an emotional eating continuum. So let me, I'm gonna show you this, but I'm also gonna take a screenshot and fold it up there. You can see this emotional eating continuum here. So I won't hold it up there forever. I'll just take a picture and put it up there so you can see it. So there's really this continuum and you can see it starts with the sensory gratification. And that's sort of along the same lines as that taste hunger that we talked about. 
And then you get into more of using food as comfort, using food as distraction, and then using food as sedation and food as punishment. But I think it's really important to note that some emotional eating is normal and we shouldn't beat ourselves up about that. I also think that like if the little old lady next door were to give you some cookies, there would be some emotions tied to that. You would feel happy about that. You would want to partake in that and enjoy that cookie. You might not necessarily be hungry, and that might be a little bit of the emotion, that might be a little bit of the taste hunger. Or for instance, what I notice is that if my nephews hand me like some goldfish to eat, I'm gonna eat them even though I'm not necessarily hungry because there's that emotional connection there, there's that maybe taste hunger, maybe I actually do want to eat them. But I think the biggest thing there is that there's that connection and there's that emotion there where I feel so much love that they're giving me some of their goldfish that I'm gonna eat them. Or for instance, a birthday party. You might eat birthday cake even though you're not necessarily hungry. Or a bride and groom on their wedding day. This is a really good one. So they may not actually be hungry for cake by the time they get there. I know on my wedding day, I probably wasn't because we had this giant meal and it was delicious. I don't even remember if I was actually hungry, but I was so full of emotion, full of happiness, full of gratitude that I still freaking ate the cake. And again, with this one, I think it's all about finding that balance. And yes, you do still want to use the hunger scale with this and say, okay, you know, I know that if I am starting to eat the birthday cake when I'm already satisfied, maybe I'll pay attention to that to see how much of it is going to satisfy me so that you don't wind up feeling way too full at the end of it and uncomfortable. I think that like everything with having no food rules, it's all about balance. But it's definitely not just the hunger and fullness diet. Because like I said, I mean, let's take right now, for example, if I were to skip the snack because I'm not necessarily super hungry right now in the moment, by the time I'm able to eat lunch later on in the day, I'm going to have like a last supper phenomenon and just eat everything in sight. And then the next minute I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so full right now. But having the snack right now is going to not let me swing all the way to that hangry side of the pendulum by the time lunch comes around so that I can still have a clear head to make decisions about food. Okay, what sounds good to eat? What is going to fuel me? What is gonna make me feel good? And obviously I could go into this topic way more in detail, especially each of the three different times to eat when you're not necessarily actually hungry. So if any of these need clarification, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'm happy to expand more on any of them. But I just really wanted to let you guys know that it's okay to not just eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full, that is not living, right? You'd miss out on birthday cake. You'd miss out on wedding cake. You would just swing back and forth on that pendulum, especially if you have crazy schedules. And let's be honest, life does not let us just eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full. That is not real life for so many of us today. Yes, it's fabulous when that happens, but a lot of times we have meetings, we have events that we need to get to, we have kids sporting events that we have to cart them around to, whatever it might be, we can't always just eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full. This is a really common one that comes up with the girlfriends in my membership about dinner. So, I mean, by that time, everyone has been eating at different times throughout the day. And especially, I know for me, my husband comes home from work at a different time than I come home from work. And I want to make sure that we are able to spend that time together in the evening and eat our meal together because that's really important to me that we can bond over that and just have that time together. Now, sometimes you have to use that practical hunger and say, you know, if I wait until he comes home and we're ready to eat dinner, I'm probably going to be way super hungry. So maybe I'll just have a little bit of a snack now. I think that the idea of practical hunger is something that people don't talk about enough, but it's so, so important. So one thing that you can actually put into practice from this video is to kind of go through your day and say, okay, where am I, if any times, am I swinging back and forth on this pendulum from being way too hungry to being way too full? And that might show you where you can put some practical hunger into use. For instance, a really common one is when people come home from work, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry by the time I come home from work. Throw a snack in there before you leave work to kind of prevent that. That is using that practical hunger. Yeah, maybe when you are getting up from your desk and leaving work, you're not necessarily hungry, but if you know that by the time you get home, you are famished, might be a good idea to use a little bit of that practical hunger. And also, Never beat yourself up if you just eat something because it tastes good. Remember that taste hunger is something that's super important too, a part of normal life, a part of living, and that emotional eating 
can be normal. There's a lot of times we do tie emotion to our food. Now, don't get me wrong, don't get your panties in a bunch and say I'm telling everyone to go grab a pint of Ben and Jerry's because you're in a happy mood or you're celebrating something. That's not what I'm saying at all, you guys. Let's be real here. But there is some of those emotions that are normal. And like the intuitive eating book kind of shows, there's this spectrum of it. But now that we have done our little chat sesh here, I did this a lot more casual than I usually do the videos. So let me know if you like this style, just super casual chit chat, kind of like real and raw in the moment. And now I'm going to go ahead and eat my little pecan pie thing. So let me show you these. So good. So it's literally just a date and some pecans. I'll show you how I just made those. It's so, so simple. And like I said, I got this idea from you guys on Instagram. So I asked you guys, what are some ways that you like to eat dates? Dipped in peanut butter was another big one stuffed with cashew butter, a lot of the nut butters. Um, so I like that. Dates, I love these as a snack because they are a quick source of energy. They have some fiber in there. You pair some nuts in there. You get a little bit of those healthy fats, some protein. Um, it's just a really great option. You guys also said to throw in some cream cheese in the middle of them for a more savory option. So lots of different options. Let me know your favorite way to eat them in the comments because I'm always looking for new ways to eat them. All right, guys, that is it for this casual video we have today. I hope that it was helpful for you to finally understand that this is not the hunger and fullness diet. We do not need to just eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full. That is not living. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe down there and hit the little bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded every single Sunday. And I'll see you guys later. I need to take a picture of these. Photogram. Now we eat. Mmm. It's like a legit pecan pie. Pecan or pecan? Let me know what you think.